So I don't know what's a little bit crazier, the fact that I went to VidCon this weekend or the fact that I made it out of Baltimore City traffic alive. So discuss if you live here. Um, so hey everybody, once again, yes, I've returned to your phone, your TV, your tablet. I don't know what you're watching me on right now, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm. And today, today I'm very kind of like excited to talk about this. Um, for those that have been seeing me post on social media all weekend, I attended VidCon in Baltimore 2023 because A, I live here, so I could literally just go there and come back home, which was fantastic. Um, secondly, I was try I've was i been trying to go to VidCon in general for years. And when I say for years, I think I was gonna go in 2020, but then of course the, uh, the whole shutdown happened, the lockdown happened, so like, all the uh, public events got canceled, um, sporting events got canceled, all that good crazy stuff. So um, I never had a chance to go to that VidCon that year. Um, and then I think the next year, um, I think got pushed back um, to October. And then for some reason I couldn't make it in October. Um, I think it was last year when they tried to do VidCon again. Um, so this was my first ever VidCon. I'm I didn't know what to really expect. I've only, you know, seen things online, things like that. Um, but overall, I just, I felt like, I felt like I just wanted to give like a general review of like my experience with VidCon. Cause I always see like people online talking about like, oh, you know, if I went to VidCon, you know, I wish I could go to VidCon, but I live here or, you know, I live in a different country. Um, things of that nature. So I was like, you know what? Why not just do a little review of my weekend, my experience, um, some ups, some downs that uh, I had about the whole weekend. Um, Cause I know uh, they sent out like an email uh, to everybody about like their experience. So I think I'm gonna do the questionnaire, but also why not do a video? Cause hello, I make videos, hi. Um, if you are new here, um, I don't generally do like vlogs all the time or uh, reviews all the time. I mostly do like deep dive commentary videos, um, um, commentary videos on influencers. That's kind of like the main thing that I do. But I also do things like this where I just talk about, you know, my experience with things, my experience with life. Um, I have like story time videos. I have all types of videos on this channel. So um, if you're new, you have a lot of content you, if you wanna look at, feel free. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. Uh, cause that's what, you know, that's what content creation is all about for me. Um, so if you are the VidCon person watching this, um, I doubt they're watching it. Um, if you are the VidCon person watching this, I mean all this in fair criticism. I don't mean anything negative about your event. And just because my experience may have been one thing with like certain areas of the event doesn't mean that everybody felt the same. So this is just my personal experience. Like this isn't like a, like me trying to speak up for anybody else. So, um, I guess we should start from even the uh, registration process. Cause I, like, again, I've never done this type of thing before. So um, it was very interesting that uh, I think I noticed that for Baltimore, for the community track, which is the general public, which is like mostly what everybody does, um, which is like, um, I think it's like two days, but, um, I could be wrong, and the, again, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, I think in VidCon Anaheim, which is like the main, like the main big show that inspired me to do video content that made me want to uh, do video content, I think they do three days for their community track for the, like the panels and stuff. Um, uh, I don't remember which venue it is. I think it's the convention center in Anaheim. Um, I hear it's like extremely big, like bigger than the Baltimore Convention Center, which was where VidCon Baltimore was. It makes a lot of sense that you would need three days for all those YouTubers, cause uh, YouTubers, TikTokers, cause I feel like a lot of content creators actually are on the West. So it's like more accessible to them, more accessible for the fans. Uh, so you definitely wanna give uh, like the experience for like the bigger audience. And I think that was kind of like one of my like downsides is because I would have loved to experience three days of VidCon instead of two. I just felt like, you know, Saturday was like so hype. Like it was like, Saturday was like a 10 for me. And then when I came back on Sunday, the next day, 
I just felt like the energy was a little bit lower. I don't know um, what that was all about. Maybe I was just tired from the day before, but like the energy, like in the whole building just felt like more mellow. So it dropped down my excitement from like a 10 to like maybe a seven or eight. Um, again, I don't think that's Vicon's fault. I just think maybe I was like a personal, like I was personally just so tired that like, I was so like, like if you really think about it, staying in a convention center from 9 a.m. Um, all the way until like 9 p.m. That's 12 hours of like walking around, walking up and down the stairs, um, going to different panels, um, cheering for people on stage. Um, that can take a lot of you to uh, take a lot out of you as a fan. Um, and if you uh, if you're new, my voice is a lot deeper than this. Um, so people that are watching me over and over again uh, can hear that my voice is a little bit different because I lost part of my voice this weekend. <laughs> Whew. So though again, that's like I guess that's not really a negative. It's more like a personal preference. I wish there was three days instead of two. Really, like I really would have loved to experience more things, um, which I'll get into when it comes to like scheduling and stuff like that. Because uh, unfortunately, on the last day, it, it just felt a little bit rushed. Um, that's just my uh, personal opinion, though. So let's just start from the beginning, beginning, which is us getting our passes. So we actually came the Friday before Saturday, which Saturday and Sunday were the main days for community people. Um, we came early to get our passes and uh, I was kind of surprised that nobody was in line to get their community passes early because just to us, it just made so much sense to just get this out the way now. So we're not waiting in line to get this and we have to do, we have to go to meet and greets and um, be on time. So I was just a little bit taken back by that. Um, you're not gonna see my face a lot for most of the video because I'm gonna be showing a lot of uh, B-roll so I'll just be able to talk and not focus on the camera as much. Um, but I am gonna tell you about the first part before we get into that. Um, one of the, I guess this is a personal gripe for me and maybe this is like a first world problem, I don't know. So yes, we got our community passes the day before like the, the main uh, community to track days where we were allowed to walk around on the expo floor, you know, go to the main stage, like watch, you know, the morning shows, go to panels and things like that. I was just a little taken aback that e even though we got our like community passes early, we still had to wait in line at security for even if you already had your pass, you had to wait in the line with everybody else that didn't have their passes. So it kind of felt like it defeated the purpose of you know, picking up your pass early because it just, for me, I guess it just makes a lot of sense in my head. Um, it just makes sense to maybe like have a separate security line for uh, people that already got their passes. That way they kind of feel like rewarded for coming early and, you know, getting their credentials out the way. Um, again, that's like probably a personal issue um, because like the first couple hours, it, it does take like 20 to 30 minutes to get through line. So if you had like a meet and greet schedule that you were had to go to a little bit early and you weren't expecting to wait in line, I can see how that can be a little bit annoying, but it wasn't like that all day. So let me just, let me just be a caveat to that. It wasn't like that all day. Um, it was just in the beginning when everybody started showing up. Um, again, this is just like my personal, like, you know, Hey, you know, it just makes more sense to just, if you got your pass, go on this line with everybody else that does have a pass, you can get through faster. I just thought they make more sense, but you know, uh, I'm not in charge of the event, obviously, because. Um, so after we got inside, um, it just it just seemed like maybe maybe this was like a personal thing, but again, um, the security just was really not lackadaisical, but like there were some people that I've noticed that when they scan their um, their wristbands, and for those that don't know. When you got your community badge, you also had a wristband that you could not take off the entire weekend. And um, something I wasn't a fan of is that you had to keep it on all weekend. So if you got it on that Friday, you were wearing it for basically three days. And I have a big, like I have big hands, like that's not even like a flex. So having this tied around my wrist for a couple days and you can't loosen it. That's, that's something that kind of bothered me. Um, you can't loosen it, you can only tighten it. So if you accidentally tighten this on your wrist and you had to cut off and you cut off like circulation on your wrist or your arm, 
you would have had to cut this off and pay like a $20 replacement fee to fix this. I just don't understand why we just didn't have like a latch to the wristband where we could just take it off um, when we're home or at our hotels or wherever people were staying. Um, it just seems kind of like, may, I don't know, may, maybe, maybe for security reasons, maybe they didn't want people like sharing RFID wristbands. Um, I don't know. I just felt like, you know, there should be like a more simpler way than just making like forcing people to keep it on all weekend. Um, I just wasn't a big fan of this, to be honest with you. Um, especially for, you know, some people that may have like sensory issues and like, I know some people that have a really big problem with stuff like rubbing their skin like constantly. So like this definitely rubbed my skin and you know, I don't know if I do have sensory issues, but even for me, it was a little bit much for me. Um, that's kind of like, I guess that's kind of like a big complaint because it just kind of, it just didn't feel, it's like, it just didn't feel, it just felt weird, you know? Um, so we got our passes, we went the next day, waited in line in the morning, it took like 20 to 30 minutes because the line was outside the door, obviously. It's the first day of VidCon for community people. Um, so we got, we went upstairs. Um, something I noticed is that for a lot of people, like when they scan the wristband, it turned red and the security just kind of didn't care or they just kind of, didn't feel like arguing with people or arguing with like, you know, family members. Um, Cause there was a lot of families there, um, but it was a lot of adults when they scanned their wristband, it just went red and red means you're not allowed to go through or something. Um, especially for the meet and greet areas, because for a lot of people from what I saw and maybe, maybe security knew something I didn't, um, but a lot of wristbands turned red when it came to the meet and greet lines because for meet and greets, if you got one in advance, it was already on your wristband and it gave you the time and your email, uh, who you're gonna go see, what time, what queue line you had to go to. Um, but for some people, when they scanned it, it turned red and security just kind of looked at them and didn't care. Um, I don't know if security was told to just let it slide. Maybe it's a mistake or whatever. Um, but that's just something I noticed. So going through the day, um, and this is the part where you're not going to see my face for a long time. So it's pretty much talking about my day and like things that happen. Um, first thing, first things first, when we walked in, we of course went downstairs cause I was so, so excited to see the expo floor. And I have been to conventions before. I have actually been part of like an exhibition before. So I've been on the other side of it. Um, because, uh, I used to do like conventions, uh, when I was smaller, um, helping out with a, uh, sports second company, um, very, very good company, um, by the way. Um, so we got on the floor, we looked around and I was, I'm not going to lie. I was a little underwhelmed because as you can see in the footage I'm showing, um, hopefully it's still on the screen. I'm showing what I saw, but it was just like, not a lot of booths and I just remember seeing the Anaheim convention and like how much more exciting it looked. There was like a, there was like a YouTube area, like the, uh, I think it was like a Minecraft area, a Fortnite area. It was just like more, not, not carnival -y. I I guess that's not really a word I can really say. It just felt more alive as opposed to, you know, um, I think the biggest, uh, I think the biggest area was actually the Fortnite area where like you could like play Fortnite. It was like a creative map and they were giving out prizes. Like, I think like three kids won a PlayStation 5 that weekend. Um, so a lot of kids won a bucket hat because if you won one game, you got a bucket hat. Um, that was like the biggest, biggest area of the whole convention. And then it was like, I think it was like a corn maze that you literally spent like one minute, two minutes in the maze and then you got out. Um, you just literally walk through and I kind of recorded it. Um, some parts are cut because obviously some kids like ran into the shot and I, you know, I don't, I'm not a fan of posting kids on the internet. So, um, yeah, not a big fan of that. Um, the, and then the next thing was like, I think, I think I saw like the freeze dry candy section, which was my personal favorite because they get, we were giving, um, 
they were uh, giving out free samples and I had the sour Skittle one, amazing, tasted so good. Um, the regular one was not as like potent, I guess, but I definitely like the sour one. Seen the one on TikTok all the time. Um, so I definitely was so excited to try it. First time ever eating freeze dried candy, 10 out of 10 experience, we recommend. Um, hopefully I'll remember to link their website in their description below because they were amazing. Um, one of the other booths that I really, really liked was the, uh, the silent DJ booth, which is basically if you've never been to one, which is, um, you get some headphones on a table, you put them on your head, um, and the music plays through your headphones. So I, I've seen this online all the time where it'll be like a warehouse building or whatever, and like just people dancing and there's no music, but when you put the headphones on, there's like music blasting and like everybody's having a good time and it's all synced up. So all the headphones play the same music at the same time. I think that's really amazing. I think that is something that should be implemented more. Um, I, I definitely, definitely love this. Um, definitely would love to see more of this, uh, especially at conventions when you're just trying to like relax and chill and have fun. This is definitely like one of those areas that I feel like people just didn't take advantage of because it was great. I had a great time with that, uh, with that area. Um, another area was, uh, it was just like, it was just like a, uh, a YouTuber's booth. I think her name was Gaming Mermaid. I am not familiar with her content, but she seems really nice. Um, she had a meet and greet on day two. Um, she seemed really, she's like a really sweet person from what I could see. Um, her, uh, her line was kind of short and like a lot of us really felt bad because we were waiting in line for other creators and we would have loved to, uh, we definitely would have loved to uh, be in her line, but then she left. I think she had to go anyway. Um, but we definitely, we definitely think she's sweet. I checked out her content. I think I will link her in the description below as well. She seems really nice. Um, so definitely give her a follow. She does a lot of gaming content, um, especially uh, Sims. I think it's called Gacha, Gacha. Don't know how to say it, but she seemed really nice. Um, well, uh, one of the other things um, I will say that's a negative about this is it was a lot of booths, but it just didn't feel like there was a lot of things to do. Um, I've, I have heard this complaint about VidCon in the past where there's just not like not a lot of things to do unless you're there for certain creators or um, or if you look at listen to panels all day. Um, when it came to the booths, it was just like the maze was cool for like a minute or two. The Fortnite was cool until there was a line and they had to ask you to get up when your turn was over. Um, the silent DJ area was probably the place you could spend the most time at with your friends. Um, but everything else was kind of like, you just looked at it and then that was kind of like it. It was like just something to look at. Um, so it just felt like for me personally, there was not a lot to do, especially if you were there all day for both days. Um, you, it can kind of get like tiring really fast and like boring really fast. Um, I will say there was a, there was one area that was like, kind of interesting to me which was this vidcon box and this vidcon box apparently like the big gimmick is like you're not supposed to know what's inside or who's inside and there was like a countdown on top of the box which counted down to zero and people were crowding around the box and people were like pulling their phones out and uh, and um just by looking at people's reactions like people were speculating like it was mr beast in the box it was dream um, I made a joke that it was a Tana Mojo in the box because for those that have watched my channel and know about Tana Mojo, you know why that's funny. On the first day of VidCon, the day before Tana's birthday, can she come do a panel with all of the other creators on Escape the Night at VidCon? And so we're agreeing to all of this. I'm so excited. VidCon is telling me I'm going to be a featured creator. I'm so pumped. I'm promoting the fuck out of the event, obviously. And so a few weeks before VidCon comes around and VidCon announces the featured creator lineup. I'm sure that by this story, you see where this is going. For the second year in a row, VidCon decided that they were not going to make me a featured creator. I will not even begin to explain to you the devastation that I felt. In my career, that is definitely top five, top three even, devastating moments. I think it's because I'm definitely the type of person that doesn't ever hype myself up for something or get super excited for something because it could always end differently and I would rather not build myself up to be let down 
down. I would rather just chill and if something good happens, be surprised. But of course, I had just spent the last year building myself up for the moment that featured creators were announced at VidCon. I had just spent the last six months being told by VidCon that this event was going to be themed around 10 people and one of them was going to be me. That I would be doing so many things every day of VidCon for VidCon, for their company as a featured creator. And so immediately we call VidCon so angry saying, hey, if you're gonna plaster my face all over this event and you're gonna give every single other person on that billboard, you're gonna give every single other person in the Escape the Night show a featured creator pass. If you're going to sell hundreds and hundreds of tickets to watch a premiere of a show that I'm in to people, why can't you give me a stupid fucking plastic badge so that this year is in hell like last year's hell that you put me <laughs> um but i also waited around the box i kind of recorded it the whole thing the whole countdown from the minute down and when the video counted down um there was like a youtuber inside on the first day i think her name was lauren z side i kind i had no idea who she was so i kind of did like a quick look up and she from what i can tell a lot of her videos especially in the past um have to do like with like sims and like stuff with her dog i don't know what that's all about it was just a little bit weird um if this is a type of humor that i don't understand i'm sorry it just it's a little bit weird <laughs> that you're making content about being in love with your dog even like fic like fictionally i just think that's weird um again just me personally <laughs> um so it was also in the box was a magic guy. Um, can't remember his name right now, but he seemed, he was really cool. He was really cool all weekend. Um, his magic trick, he does a lot of card tricks. I think they were sick. Um, I love magicians. So like that was a 10 out of 10 for me. He seemed dope. Um, and then of course it was just like a, a lot of a lot of kids in the area. And I was like, okay, this is definitely a, a YouTuber for kids. So we walked away from that and um, the panels were actually not that bad. I met a lot of YouTubers I wasn't expecting to meet because um, I just didn't check out the content creator list before leaving. Um, I did meet Swell Entertainment, uh, Amanda Swell Entertainment. She's very, very nice. Like that was probably like the biggest highlight of the weekend for me, to be honest. Um, I took pictures with so many content creators. Um, all weekend long. If you want to see who I took pictures with, you can definitely check out my Instagram or my Twitter. I definitely put pictures on both of my socials there. So just check that out. Um, the panels were very informational to me. And this is kind of like, this, this kind of gave me like that, like creators itch I've been like looking for because I have had like creators block for a while. Um, so this, this, these panels this weekend where, you know, like even in the audience, you just hear how many content creators are that are out there that just hunger for information. And like, you can see the drive that everybody has to like want to do content. Uh, like I saw people vlogging as they walked, um, you know, people doing interviews for their channels. Like it was really cool. And it just felt like the VidCon community that I was hoping to see when I like looked at it online. Like it felt like, it really did feel like a community of content creators just trying to do their best with at whatever they're trying to do. Um, I think that was probably like the best part of VidCon itself is just seeing all these collaborators, content creators, just get along, you know? Like there was no drama. Um, <laughs> I mean, there was like one thing that just kind of made me laugh, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, I just thought the panels, like there were so many panels. Um, it just was a lot of information to take in, but I really feel like I learned a lot. I definitely feel like I learned a lot um, with these panels and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, it, it really, it was also really humbled me, you know? Um, Cause, uh, how do I say it? Like, I think, I think I feel, I felt stuck making content for so long. And again, I do a lot of commentary videos, but I also do like vlogs and stuff. I do unboxing videos. Like I, I kind of do what I like. I kind of do what I want on this channel, which, you know, that makes me happy. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but it just really humbled me in the fact that like, there are other people that are just as hungry as you that, you know, want to like do great, you know? And it, it made me feel like, you know, I'm not alone when I'm like feeling like I'm having writer's block. Cause you know, even listening to all these uh, content creators that have like millions of followers, thousands of followers, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of followers, just hearing all of them that, you know, they all go through the same thing that I go through. It really just kind of gave me that encouragement that like, you know, I don't have to have it all figured out like immediately, just take my time with it. And I think that was probably my biggest takeaway from this weekend, um, which actually I kind of needed to hear that, you know, um, but that's just me. I don't know if other creators out there felt the same. Um, so going back to what was on the floor, um, again, just not really a much, lot to do when it came to the expo booths. Like once you did it once, it was kind of it. So for people that were there all day, I can see how, you know, it got boring to the point where people were just sitting um, upstairs, just like looking at the scenery of Baltimore City um, for the most part. Um, Another, I guess this will lead into my other kind of complaint, I guess, uh, which is there wasn't a lot of food options. And I don't know if I took footage of the food court or what they were selling, but it was a lot of like sweets and it didn't feel like there was a lot of like options when it came to food. It was like chicken tenders, fries, maybe like a salad bowl. Um, I think they had like a burrito bowl type of thing. Um, what else? They had smoothies, churros. Uh, they had a lot of Gatorade and energy drinks, which I really don't drink Gatorade like that anymore. And I'm not really a fan of like energy drinks all the time because that can really take a toll on your like health. Um, if you drink too much, um, it was just like water, a can of soda, uh, depending on which one you get or like energy drinks, which doesn't feel like a lot of like variety or you could just get a smoothie, you know? Uh, it, to, I guess maybe I was expecting more from like a VidCon convention when it came to like food options, because if you didn't like any of the food in there, you would have had to like leave. And if you wanted like Chipotle or something or, you know, McDonald's or like something like that, you would have had to go walk out, walk outside, go get your food, um, eat your food and then come back and then go through security all over again. I did not want to, to go through security all over again. So I just kind of like ate some Papa John's like personal pizzas there, which they were okay. I'm not really a fan of like Papa John's personal pizzas. I like the bigger pizzas, but like, hey, you gotta eat what you can, um, eat what's available. I guess I should be more grateful um, that, you know, there was even like options like that to begin with, but I guess, I just was expecting more food options, if that makes sense. Um, so I got through, we got through our uh, first meet and greet. We went through the expo floor. We saw some games on the stage, which was pretty fun. Pretty fun. Um, oh, oh, what I meant to say was earlier that uh, even before, you know, getting to uh, get my pass the first day, I ran into, um, I think they're the McFarlane's. Um, uh, TikTokers where they make a lot of dad jokes and dad jokes content, really cool guys. Um, they just kind of dat me up because I think they recognize that I recognize them and they like said hello to me and then they went about their way. Um, something I really did love about VidCon is the accessibility of the content creators. Like it just, it, it didn't feel like there was a wall between content creator and person. It just felt like a community of people just like hanging out, like doing their thing, giving advice to each other, which I loved so much. Like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it. I just love that part of it. Like, it didn't feel like it was impossible to like talk to a TikToker with 10 million uh, like followers and just like say hello and like ask for advice. It just felt like natural, maybe. And maybe I'm just comfortable around, you know, celebrities and things like that. Um, Cause I was like, the person I was with definitely said that uh, I was very calm and like very natural around them, which I don't know. I don't see creators for numbers. I see them as a person. And that's just kind of my personal opinion. Um, so if, if you would have told me that, um, 
you know, someone had 10 million followers, I, I wouldn't, I could not tell. Um, because at the end of the day, content creators are still people. Um, and a, like a lot of them were just so polite and so nice. And it was just so refreshing to see. Um, because I don't know why I was expecting like them to just kind of like do their panels and then go to the green room and just wait for their next thing. I definitely don't know why, how do I say it? I don't know why I was expecting them to be shut off, but like just seeing them walk around the expo floor, saying hello to you, um, stopping to have a conversation with you. I appreciate stuff like that. And I will say I was genuinely surprised how often like they were just easy to talk to. Um, I think that was probably one of the biggest, biggest highlights um, of the whole weekend. Just the accessibility of the creators was just so, how do I say it? The, the, just like the accessibility of the creators was just so like good. It just felt good. Like they didn't feel like impossible beings that, you know, you only see on your like computer screen, you know? So we did our, we went to the expo before we got food, all that good stuff. Um, we walked around a little bit more. Uh, like I said, there was not really much to do except, you know, go to panels. So we went to like three panels, I think, in one day on Saturday, or it was two. I can't remember. I'm not going to lie to you. I think we did like two panels, watched a bunch of games. Um, and then we went to the finale show of the first day. And this is kind of like, it, it, this was probably like one of the biggest, big, like big things that I really liked, which was the finale show of Saturday. It just felt like so star studded and so like energetic like just seeing your favorite content creators just on stage just having a good time uh being interactive with the audience um you know doing videos on stage and interacting with the audience and things like that um i will also say i am very i was a little bit surprised by how many content creators i didn't know did music i think uh angry angry reactions i didn't know he did music bro and just seeing him on stage, it was it was like, wow, okay. And I think uh, Leron as well. Leron, uh, who interviews the kids, also, uh, also did music. I did not know this. And I was just like, dude, this is sick. And just seeing how versatile these content creators are, they're just not stuck in that niche of like doing one thing. I think that's amazing. I think, you know, I think this just proves that, you know, TikTok is definitely here to stay because um, a lot of content creators this weekend I did meet were primarily TikTokers, which I don't think that's a problem. I just think that's kind of like a wake up call. Like, you know, hey, YouTube's just not the big dog anymore like it used to be. Uh, Cause you got TikTok. Um, TikTok is definitely, I, I don't know if TikTok has passed YouTube yet. It probably has, to be honest with you. Um, but I, it just proves that, you know, TikTok wasn't just like a one and done kind of like, area it was definitely uh definitely definitely the app to be at right now which as a youtuber <laughs> i know that's not really a good thing for me because <laughs> i don't really do tiktoks but hey i'm still gonna post what i like you know post things that are you know that i just enjoy that's kind of like what i like to do here anyway and hey i'm one day if i get lucky i blow up if i don't hey I tried. I did what I like to do. I didn't force myself to do something I didn't want to do and not be happy with it. So I'm very happy with like what I'm doing now, you know? So that was pretty much night day one of VidCon, which again, that left me at a 10. Um, I was so just so overzealous and overjoyed with how fun everything was and just, you know, it felt, it felt so energetic. I can't, like, you had to be there to understand. It just felt like, like a big burst of, like, inspirational energy came over me. So I was definitely going into day two thinking, like, it was going to be, like, the same thing, maybe even better. And unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, the next day um, was very, uh, not bad. It was just more so, like, a down from Saturday. I don't know if it's because, you know, whenever it's the, like the last day of conventions as someone that's been to conventions before, it's always like the last day you're thinking about going home. You're thinking about like traveling home. 
you're thinking about like, oh, I gotta work the next day. Like for instance, for me, I live in Maryland. So like, I was like, oh man, I gotta work this week, which, you know, can put a damper on your, uh, damper on your mood. Um, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Um, for those that are new here, I really don't do one take videos often. I like to cut it up a lot, but honestly, I just felt like besides me sneezing and coughing, which you're not gonna see that unless you're into that. Anywho, uh, <laughs> um, I really don't like I really don't like doing like one take videos that much because uh, I'm kind of insecure about you know how I look at the camera sometimes and how I don't look at the camera sometimes and how I talk and if I mess up words and I just overthink it a lot sometimes. I'm just being honest with you on that. Um, so please don't get too used to me doing one takes uh, because I definitely wanted to talk about everything. Like this was supposed to be like two separate videos. I was gonna talk about day one and then day two but day one made me so tired that I just could not record. And even after day two, like, this is like the day after VidCon was over and I'm still tired, you know? So um, this is supposed to be two videos. I was like, you know what? I'll just make it one, one and done. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much day one. Um, again, it was on 10. Day two, it was a little bit low. I'm gonna tell you why. Um, even getting there in the morning, it was just like way less people. And I do know that VidCon on Sunday was not sold out because you can just go on one day and not the other if you, that's what you wanted to do. Um, the box was active again and I was like, okay, who's gonna come out the box this time? And I'm just gonna spoil it for you. It was like um, these brothers and I think they're vloggers. I've never heard of them. Um, Never heard of them. They were kind of like goofing off and like doing a lot of stuff in the box or whatever. Um, they they seem nice, so I'm not really gonna like hark on them or whatever. Um, oh, uh, day one. So I'm not gonna say where or when. <laughs> so if you watch my channel, this, this is gonna be funny. Um, and one of the panels that I went to, I'm not gonna say which one, uh, Gabby Hanna's name came up and there was like an awkward silence when her name came up and um, there was like a pause. And then like, it was followed by some booze. And I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little shook. Cause um, Gabby Hanna really hasn't been online for about a year plus now. I think the last time she was really online was New Year's Eve of last year. And even then she wasn't really like online. She was just kind of like posting music and then leaving. Um, but yeah, Gabby's hand his name came up and like there was like a little bit of booze and I was surprised that some kids were even booing. I was like, I was like, okay. Um, are they booing because they think she's cringe or they're booing because of what she did? I don't know what that was all about. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> Um, so in day two, we had two meet and greets that day. So, um, I, we didn't really get a chance to like go to as many panels as we wanted. Um, another thing, it was also a shorter day it ended around 6.30 instead of nine o'clock like the day before. And that kind of leads to one of my other, I guess, complaints about Vidicon itself, which is, um, it felt like the scheduling on Sunday was a bit rushed or... It just felt like they, I don't, I, I don't know how to explain it. It just felt either, either the convention center closed early that day or VidCon, I don't know. Let me just say this. The finale show on Sunday was also conflicting with three panels at the same time. So if you wanted to see the finale show and I'm from here and the whole point of the finale show on Sunday was to showcase the content creators that lived here, um, like give them a spotlight. So I wanted to see that, but we all, we ended up going to like the comedy rap battle panel um, at the end of the day. So there was like two other panels at the same time. So there was like a lot of content creators were away from the show 
And not only that, it felt like a lot of fans were away from the show. So it just didn't make sense to me why you would have the grand finale conflicting with three other events at the same time. I don't know if that was intentional or the convention center told the VidCon staff that they had to end the day early. Um, I don't know what that was all about. Um, I just thought that was a little, I thought that was a questionable move. But again, I'm not in charge of a convention. I, uh, again, uh, but to me, for my first ever VidCon, it just didn't make sense. Cause if this was your grand finale, you would want the most people in the audience, you know? But that's just, that's just me, I guess. Um, so really couldn't, really there's not really much to talk about for day two. Cause like the booths were the same. Um, everything was pretty much the same. Like. Uh, I think that corn maze was still there. Um, I didn't. We didn't go through it again because, like, there was no point. <laughs> but I, uh, I will say, we did play the. Uh, we we played the Fortnite. Um, we did play at the Fortnite uh, square. Um, we had a great time, even though neither of us won around. I had a blast. I think we were there for like thirty minutes to an hour almost. Um, and then the line picked up, and then the the workers were like, "Hey." Um, you, you have to get off because we have more people online. And we were like, oh, okay. So we didn't win, so we didn't like get a prize. Um, so pretty much our day was like two meet and greets. Uh, we went to one panel, uh, we played Fortnite, um, saw some games on stage, and then we went to the ending panel, which was the rap panel, rap, the comedy rap area. Um, so it, it felt like the day was kind of rushed, but in a way it wasn't, if that makes sense. But when it came to like, you know, of course, me talking about the grand family, once again, once again, um, it, it just felt like, you know, how do I say, how do I say it without seeming like I'm like being mean? It just felt like the VidCon, whoever's in charge of the VidCon schedule, just kind of like, didn't give the uh, Baltimore slash Maryland creators a chance to really shine, um, which I don't, you know, that's just my personal opinion. Um, and yeah, I think, I think VidCon overall, I think VidCon overall was, uh, I think it was good. I was, maybe, maybe I had too much of high hopes um, that was gonna like blow me out of the water. Um, maybe that's my pessimistic side. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I will say I am glad I went. I am very glad that I, uh, took time off to really experience VidCon, um, for what it was. Um, I definitely want to go to the VidCon in Anaheim next year, if I can, to really get the big, the, the big experience. Cause everybody said, like a lot of people, some people were from the West Coast, and I think they were saying, like, the Anaheim one was bigger. Um, which, it would make sense, because that's where, like, again, that's where a lot of content creators are right now. Um, or, like, that's, like, the big kahuna, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, yeah, I... This definitely gave me that uh, creator's itch that I've been looking for, because... I felt so stuck in like what to make or what to talk about or what to do uh, with my channel. And this definitely gave me the inspiration I needed to, you know, push myself to really like, like don't give up, like try, um, just just keep doing what I'm doing, you know? And um, I will say, um, maybe, maybe VidCon should try going to DC next year because there is there are so many convention centers in DC. There's the one um, on the harbor in DC, and then there's the one inside the city itself. I feel like both of those are a lot bigger. And I don't know if VidCon was confident that Baltimore was gonna bring out a good crowd, but Saturday was sold out. I don't know if Sunday ever sold out, but um, it did feel like a lot less people. But I hope that VidCon saw that the East Coast, like we exist. Um, like, I, there's like not a lot of conventions that come through here except like business. I've never really seen like a, of course, VidCon first time in the East Coast. Um, 
there's like a lot of conventions that uh just don't seem like they get like that much traction i know like the anime conventions um come here the comic book conventions come here but when it came to like vidcon I don't know if they weren't confident that, you know, the East Coast crowd would show up, but I feel like we did. And I feel like our energy was actually really good. Um, I hope that VidCon saw that we really loved like what we had. Um, but like those complaints I had earlier, I think those were just per like, not I think, those were personal complaints just for me. Um, I'm pretty sure other people were like 10 out of 10, loved it, would recommend. Um, overall for me, VidCon got like a, I would say like a 8.5, a nine out of 10. Um, I feel like the second day really like lowered my score. Otherwise I would have gave VidCon like a high nine, like a 9.5, nine, 9.5 overall. But I think the second day just kind of like the energy just was so low. Uh, I just, I don't know. It, I just couldn't rate it a little bit higher. Um, I, I guess I don't have much else to say except, you know, thank you VidCon for coming to the East Coast, giving us a chance, checking us out. Um, there are so many content creators, especially on this side of the States that I feel like, you know, I, I like I was so like I was so surprised by how many content creators actually are from my area. Um, it's just something I don't think about and like every time I hear about a social media person, I always think they're in New York, which is a little bit upstate for me, obviously. And then like there's Texas, Florida, and then Cali. Like to me, that feels like the big four states where social media influencers are from. Um, it's either New York, Cali, Florida, or Texas. Um, but just to see that there are people from Maryland that still live here that are making content and you know getting a following it just kind of gives me hope that you know i will be on that stage one day i will be on that panel one day and um this definitely inspired me to keep making videos and just in a way i really do love doing this um i know i do a lot of commentary videos and i do a lot of shady videos i guess but uh, at the end of the day i do love doing this and i just love interacting with people online um for those that don't know if you made it this far thank you <laughs> for those that don't know i have a huge 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 issue with a uh, public speaking i'm not really the best at it um people say they can't tell when i'm talking in front of a group of people. They, but I'm like, dog, I am extreme. I was extremely nervous. I don't know how I did it. And um, yeah, public speaking, not my thing. I think that's why I like YouTube so much is because it just helps me get past that. And when I'm looking at a screen instead of people, it's a little bit easier for me. Um, but that's my personal, I guess, take from that. And uh, I, I really don't have anything else to say. I know this video is almost an hour long for me recording. I can see I'm at 47 minutes now, but I just had so much fun at VidCon. I know I gave a lot of complaints. I know I gave you like a 8.5 out of 10, but whatever. But um, at the end of the day, I had a lot of fun at VidCon and I would gladly go back again. You know, hopefully, you know, maybe next year I'll be a future creator. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be cool if I could just get on that stage one day. And maybe, again, just maybe this is what I needed to give me that kick in the ass to be like, oh, you, you got to push yourself. You got to keep making content. Keep doing what you want to do. Keep doing what you love. Because at the end of the day, you're in control of your destiny. And I'm like, man, you know, I think that's crazy. So once again, it is not. That's me. Um, if you're new, please check out all my other content. I have so much content if you want to. Look, I do a lot of deep dive videos, like I said, about influencers and people that take advantage of their audience. So if you wanna check that out, feel free. I also have story time videos, reaction videos, unboxing videos. Um, I don't do a lot, of, I don't do food videos. I think <laughs> I think I eat kind of weird. <laughs> so once again, it is Malcolm, that's me. Um, I really don't have much else to say. And 
I always end my videos like this for if you're new, if you're watching, if you made it this far. I always end my videos like this because I really do mean it. I wish you well. I wish you good health. And I will see you again next time.